Pause it. Hmm? Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amy and I make uni videos, mental health videos and lifestyle videos. So today's video is going to be the ultimate guide to Northumbria University in Newcastle which is currently where I go. I know this won't appeal to the majority of my viewers but my uni videos that I've made in the past are suddenly doing really well. I think it's because everyone is like looking to apply now. So I decided I'm going to do another one. This one is going to be more in depth about my uni specifically. So I'm going to be talking about different things such as Newcastle as a city, the nights out, different accommodation choices, the campuses and loads more. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is just Newcastle as a city in general. So this would also apply to you if you're looking at going to Newcastle University. But yeah, I'm just going to talk about the city in general. So. One of the things that I noticed when I first moved to uni is that there are so many different things to do. Although this probably applies to every city, I'm just talking about Newcastle specifically here. But yeah, there was just so much to do. You've got the quayside, loads of stuff to do there. There's really nice restaurants, um, there's a few bars I think. There's the different bridges that you can go on. There's um, the Gateshead Sage. There's the Baltic, which is like a free um, museum you can go in and it has a really nice viewing point over the quayside. There's a cat cafe, which is one of my faves. Yeah, so the quayside is a really, really good area. There's also the Life Centre, which is by the train station. That's a really good experience if you're just looking for a cute little day out with your flatmates. The Life Centre is a great option. And obviously shopping as well. There's Eldon Square, which is the shopping centre. There's shops outside. Um, really great for shopping. Not to mention that the public transport selection is pretty good. So they've got buses, they've got the metro, which is kind of like the London Underground. Got the trains, obviously. Uh, you can get the train to the metro centre, which is a shopping centre in Gateshead, which is kind of near to Newcastle. That's another good shopping trip. And the nightlife is amazing. Newcastle is said to be one of the best nights out in the UK for students, and that is fully proven by me. Like. The nights out are insane. There's so many different clubs, like if you like a specific type of music, you can go to a specific club. Um, there's some clubs that have, you know, different floors for different styles of music, so you can choose which one you go to. There's different bars, if you're not looking to go for a full on night out, but you wanna go to a bar, there's so many different bars, so many different restaurants, it's insane. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the actual facilities that the uni provide, and also the different campuses. There are two campuses in Northumbria Uni. There's the city campus, which is like the main one, and there's Coach Lane campus. So with the city campus, there is a 24 hour library open seven days a week. There is also a place called Sports Central, which has a huge gym in it. Although one bad thing about this is that I signed up to a gym membership in my first year, and it was always ridiculously busy. Whatever time I went, it was packed. In Sports Central, they also have a swimming pool, they have badminton courts, um, they literally have everything you could imagine and not to mention they also have so so many different sports clubs that you can join although you do have to pay they have weird sports that you've probably never heard of they have like the basic sports they've got cheerleading literally every sport you can imagine they've probably got and it's just great because you can just try out new things and it's a really good opportunity they also have habita which is the student bar which is located in the students union so the students union is basically what it says like it's kind of for students and you can go in there's a reception desk if you have any issues you can go there and speak to them there's different places to study in there and this is what you'll find around campus there are different rooms and places to study in so if the library doesn't suit you there's always the student union or the student bar Habita is really good I only went there twice I think but really cheap food really cheap drinks and it's just a good place to socialize with your course mates or your flatmates Another great thing about city campus is that it's only about a two minute walk to the city centre. The campus is literally located in the city, so if you have a little break from your lecture, you can go grab a costa, you can go grab a drink, you can go do some shopping. It's really, really easy to get to the city centre. Okay, so Coach Lane campus is located around a 10 minute bus ride, I'm pretty sure, from the main campus. And you will only have to go to Coach Lane campus if you do one of these courses that they offer at Coach Lane campus but not the main campus. So I'm a guidance and counselling student so I am actually located at Coach Lane campus along with nursing, um, I think childcare and other courses like that. Not 100% sure on every single course that goes there. Like they're all to do with kind of healthcare and things like that. 
Coach Lane Campus have its own library on site which is great because if you're going to be there all day you don't want to travel back to the main campus to use the library, you can go to the library at Coach Lane. Again they also have like study spaces here, they have a cafeteria, it just has a really nice homely community feel because it's so much smaller than the main campus. I feel like it just is so much nicer and it feels like you're in a proper little community. also have parking there if you're looking to take your car, however I'm pretty sure you do have to pay for parking and I'm not sure how much it is. If you are at Coach Lane Campus and you're thinking, oh my god, how am I going to get there, don't panic because they do actually offer you a free bus ride, so I'm pretty sure if you take the bus from the main campus to Coach Lane Campus, you can get it on it for free every single day. Um, or one of the bus stops nearby, so if you're living in an area such as Heaton or Jasmond, I'm pretty sure you can go to the bus stop and get on the bus for free, so therefore you're not having any travel costs added on just because you're at a different campus. Now I'm going to move on to speaking about accommodation, so I'm currently in my first year of uni, however I did do a year previous to this in psychology, but then I switched courses, so I'm back in my first year again, but I have already done a first year in psychology, and in that year I stayed in Bryson Court, which is part of Portland Green student village and it's located sort of near Heaton, a little bit out of the way of the city um, and it's a privately owned accommodation. I would totally recommend Portland Green Student Village, it is really sociable, um, they have five buildings in their like village and Bryson is the main one because it has the reception, it has a social area, it's got the laundry, whereas the other ones don't have these facilities. However, there are so many different accommodation options and if you're looking at accommodation, I would recommend not booking through the uni because I didn't realise this when I first booked, but there are so many more accommodation options than what the uni list on their website. The uni will list like 9 or 10, but there are so many different ones. If you want to look further into accommodation, definitely just search online something like Newcastle Student Accommodation rather than booking through a uni. There are also plenty of student areas in Newcastle. There's Heaton, Jesmond, Sandyford, and these are often the places that people will live in their second and third years when you have to start looking at getting a house. Well, you don't have to, you can live in halls again, but a lot of people do tend to get a house in second year and these are often the places that they will look into booking. The one downside about uni that I found is you have to decide so early on where you're going to live in your second year. But obviously you'll have lived in your halls for around three months, you won't really know the people you're living with too, too well, and then you suddenly have to decide, you know, where you're going to live in second year, who you're going to live with, what kind of accommodation you want. It's tricky, like it's really, really tricky. Um, and it's hard to decide because you still want to get to know these people more, you feel like you've literally just moved in, but that is just a little heads up that you do have to decide around about maybe the earliest would be October and the latest would be February I think, or maybe March, honestly not really sure, but the estate agents do start releasing student houses very very early on, so make sure you keep on checking and decide who you want to live with. And if you don't have anyone you want to live with, that's completely fine. You can move back into halls. I've had a few questions in the past saying, can you only live in halls in first year? No, not at all. You can live in halls whatever year you are. So it just completely depends what, what type of accommodation you want. You can look into shared housing, shared flats, anything like that. I'm going to talk about the student support offered at Northumbria Uni. So in terms of mental health support, they offer an excellent counselling service. However, the downside that I found with this is that it was all online and there was no face-to-face -face options and this was before COVID. So I would really recommend if you're looking for really good mental health support, Northumbria is probably the one for you but they don't have an extensive uh, support system although they do have plenty of people you can talk to. Whatever course you do you will be assigned a personal tutor which is someone you can go to if you have any issues with the course, any issues regarding uni in general, they're always there for you, you can just email them, go and see them and you can chat to them about pretty much anything. There is also a thing called an ask for help desk at Northumbria Uni and this is a literal desk where you can go ask for help about anything to do with uni, about your course, um, about like changing courses, literally anything. You can go here, there's quite a few supervisors on shift. You can also email them, you can call them, but the best thing to do would probably be to go and speak to them. There is also a service called Nightline at University which many unis up and down the UK will also have. 
This is an email and telephone listening service for students who are struggling. So if you're struggling with your mental health, you can ring or email into this service. People that volunteer there are actually students as well. So it's really good um, because you're actually going to be speaking to someone who will probably understand rather than just like a counsellor. And finally, I'm going to talk about making friends. In Northumbria, there are also so, so many different societies. And as I mentioned before, clubs to join. In terms of societies, there's literally a society for everything you can think of, like literally. Definitely have a look on the NSU website, uh, the, which is the Northumbria Student Union website. They list all the societies there. You can apply to them, it's literally like £3 for a membership and you get to go to all these cool socials and do cool things with your society. That is the end of this video everybody, I really hope it helped you out, if it did let me know below, let me know if you're going to Northumbria down below as well on what you're studying and subscribe for more uni videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon for a brand new video, bye!